What is up guys, Wrestling Premier is here. To me, these guys are the most underrated tag team in WWE history. They were so damn awesome in the ring and they were a sight to see. Like, from 2005 all the way to 2008, I don't think I've ever seen a tag team as awesome as these two. They brought a unique style to the WWE which wasn't seen before I believe. And for that, I thought why not make a video on them and like remind you guys why they were awesome. I don't understand how a team that held the titles for nearly a year are forgotten about but that's exactly what happened now first of all these guys were a gem they were seen as the next top guys in the company and i'm not over exaggerating it was just due to some attitude problems and something else i believe that they never reached the level that they did they were really talented and as for how they became a tag team here it is paul london trained at a few wrestling schools before enrolling in Shawn michaels texas wrestling academy it was there where he met brian kendrick daniel bryan and lance Cade. they were also training there around this time period brian would go by the name of spanky and i believe it was daniel bryan who coined that nickname and that's a whole nother story spanky wrestled in wwe's developmental territory memphis championship wrestling for a bit and london he wrestled in a few promotions such as tna before settling in ring of honor at that point brian kendrick was also there it was kendrick who signed to wwe first with london following up about a few months later spanky didn't do much in wwe around this time period by the end of his first run he did team up with london but he decided to leave and hone his craft elsewhere as for paul london he was doing well he won the tag team titles with billy kidman but over time Kidman lost his confidence and he was so messed up over hurting Chavo Guerrero and so they began feuding over this as Kidman gradually transitioned into a heel. I will cover this on this channel but for right now we gotta focus on Lundrick. Right afterwards London entered the Cruiserweight division. He captured the title on the March 31st 2005 episode of Smackdown and he held the gold for about 4 months. Once he dropped the title this was when Brian Kendrick was rehired. Upon Spanky's return, he was simply known as Brian Kendrick, and he was placed in a tag team with Paul London. They started to wear matching gear, but they were still losing. It wasn't until the first SmackDown after WrestleMania 22 that they were pushed. Now, Eminem going into this match thought they were going to get an easy victory, as they had beat Lundrick a few times beforehand. But London and Kendrick had other plans. They scored an upset victory over the tag team champions, and seeing as the crowd despised Eminem, they loved it. And this victory basically put Lundrick on the map. And plus, these two were hitting some ridiculously awesome moves, so that alone was enough for the crowd to like him, because these moves weren't seen in WWE around this time period. In the following weeks, Lundrick were out to prove that this wasn't an upset victory. First up, Kendrick beat Nitro, and then London beat Mercury. Eminem weren't really concerned though, but once again, for the fourth week in a row, Eminem were on the losing end of the match. So these two got into Eminem's heads, and they decided to attack them before their tag team title match. They ambushed the two, and the match was pushed back to Judgment Day. Before the match though, Lundrick and Jillian decided to embarrass Eminem. They pinched them, and at this point it was clear that London and Kendrick were in Eminem's heads. At Judgment Day, Lundrick caught Eminem off guard to capture the WWE Tag Team Championships for the first time. The trio couldn't believe this, and as a result of this loss, Eminem disbanded. Melina blamed the loss on Mercury, and this led to Nitro and Melina attacking him. Now, rumor has it Eminem split because Melina made an enemy out of everyone on the SmackDown roster. The wrestler's court punished her, and they sent her to Raw or something like that. That's what I remember. But this is not the time for Eminem, that's another time. After Judgment Day, London and Kendrick faced off against the likes of Nunzio and Vito and the Mexicals. Their toughest challenge would come at the Great American Bash when they faced the Pitbulls. Now, about this match, it's pretty underrated, and come to think of it, it was pretty good. I never thought about watching this for some reason, but now I'm inclined to see it. They managed to entertain the crowd and get them hot for the pay-per-view, and in the end, it was the champs who retained their titles. Like I said earlier, these guys stood out with their style inside the ring, which is something you can't really say nowadays. Like, these two were innovative around this time period. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, they managed to carve a niche for themselves by hitting these high-impact moves, and they found the right place to do it in the tag team division. Following the bash, it was time for the next challengers. Now, it was these guys. Do you remember them? Hell no. Obviously, I know who they are right now, but I still don't know what this tag team was. By the way, that's Damian Sandow. Anyways, these two guys, Casey James and Idol Stevens, managed to beat the tag champs in one of their first matches. It wasn't really clean, but it put them in contention for the tag team championships. Before they did face those two, Lundrick managed to beat the pit balls once again. Once again, Michelle McCool's guys attacked Lundrick right after the match, and the Pitbulls joined in on the attack, and both teams isolated the tag team champions. Since both of these teams wanted the titles, a match was booked between all three teams on the season premiere episode of SmackDown, and it was for the titles. Despite being on the brink of defeat, London and Kendrick managed to retain the titles. Both of the other teams had the match won, but it was ultimately London who was at the right place at the right time. 
The following week, Ashley Massaro praised the tag team champions and she showed a highlight clip of them. Why am I mentioning this? I believe this was the first time Ashley had anything to do with Lundre. Meanwhile, Michelle McCool's team won the right to face the tag team champions at No Mercy. And on the final episode of SmackDown, Ashley finally associated herself with London and Kendrick. At No Mercy, the champions once again delivered on pay-per-view. The problem with this is the fact that James and Stevens, they didn't really stand out. Nonetheless, it was a decent match and Lundrick retained the titles. Now, maybe if those two weren't sent back to OVW, they could have been a good tag team? I don't know. Anyways, after No Mercy, these two teams faced off for the final time on the November 3rd, 2006 episode of SmackDown. Lundrick emerged victorious with a double team and the feud was over. It was time that they moved on to their next challengers, Dave Taylor and William Regal. The duo beat the tag team champions to get themselves in contention for the gold, and this led to a matchup between both teams at Armageddon. Right when the two teams were about to go at it, Teddy Long came out and he announced that the tag team title match will be a ladder match. And Regal's face says it all, like they were prepared to utilize their tactics, but due to this announcement, everything was thrown out the window. And to make matters worse, Theodore Long announced that Eminem and the Hardys were in this match. As for the match itself, one of the best matches of 2006. It was filled with some ridiculous spots. Joey Mercury breaking his nose, unfortunately. Jeff Hardy getting dropped kicked off a ladder. Dave Taylor and William Regal being afraid of heights. And Brian Kendrick hitting the sliced bread off of the top of the ladder. In the end, London and Kendrick retrieved the titles. And all in all, it was a very brutal ladder match. If I had to pinpoint a match that should have made Kendrick and London stars, then it would be this match. Unfortunately though, nothing really changed despite retaining the gold. Seeing as Taylor and Regal never got the chance to face the champs in a normal match, they were granted that opportunity on the January 12, 2007 episode of SmackDown. During the match, Regal and Taylor dominated, but once again, the champions managed to find a way to retain their gold. Next up was their toughest challenge, Deuce and Domino. These guys were straight from the 50s and that made them stand out. Like, how many guys in the WWE were greasers? They made their presence felt by beating the tag team champions two weeks in a row, which meant that they were the number one contenders. Now, initially, WWE was going to book a Armageddon rematch and No Way Out, but for some reason, they changed the plans and instead it was Deuce and Domino who faced the tag champs. As for their matchup at No Way Out, it was decent. Lundrick sold their asses off to make Deuce and Domino look legit. But once again though, London and Kendrick stole the victory. Despite getting their asses handed to him, they managed to upset the new tag team to retain the gold. JBL was initially skeptical of their abilities, but following this match, he was a believer. Like, in nearly every match these two were in, they were the underdogs bar that Casey James and Idol Stevens feud. That's how the commentary team saw them. After No Way Out, they faced Eminem in a few matchups, and they participated in a battle royal for the World Tag Team Championships. And yes, they were still SmackDown champs. They made it to the final four before Kendrick accidentally eliminated himself. Alright, this is where things come to an end for Lundrick's title reign. On the April 20th, 2007 episode of SmackDown, Lundrick defended the gold against Deuce and Domino. At this point, they were the longest reigning WWE Tag Team Champions, holding the titles for 331 days. During the match, Paul London hurt himself. He tried going for a moonsault, but no one was there. The medical team attended to London, and Deuce and Domino smelled blood. They tore apart Kendrick. They managed to isolate him while London was away. They had a double team, and that was it. Deuce and Domino have captured the WWE Tag Team Championships. Moral of the story, London and Kendrick's high-risk offense ended up costing them the match. It felt sad to see them lose the title, but hey, it was eventually going to happen. Following this, they didn't really do much, but once this incident happened, they were screwed. London, for no reason, decided to smile, and this was when Vince's limo exploded. In an interview back in 2016, Paul London finally explained why he smiled, and I quote, I'm just standing here, man. Whatever happens, I'm the village idiot. It clearly wasn't me. Whatever is going on here, it is not me, clearly. So if you're going to kill somebody, don't kill the guy smiling. I'm just the idiot standing here smiling. That was my motivation. That was my mindset. It wasn't, this is so stupid and I'm going to laugh so I can wink at my friends back home and let them know I'm too cool for this. But we did that thing nine times at least, and I smiled every single time. Each take. It wasn't the same smile, but that was my motivation, and they didn't say anything different. I figured if they had a problem, they would tell me. Vince even looked at my face on a few of those takes as he was walking around and doing those takes and looked at me. It wasn't like he didn't see it eight or nine times. So you're telling me he just decides to smile for no reason? 
Anura, Lundrick floundered. It didn't feel like these two were the fighting champions that held the titles for nearly a year. It's unfortunate that they weren't really doing much, and their biggest accomplishment was winning the World Tag Team Championships at a live event, only to lose them about a few days later in South Africa. Now, this is what I believe. I believe this was going to be crime time's time to shine, but since they got fired, they just decided to give it to Lundrick. As for what their most memorable moment was, it's arguable, it depends on what you think. It was when they saved Triple H from an attack, and the game decided to thank them by delivering two pedigrees. Following this, they occasionally competed on Raw, but they were mostly on Heat. And when they were on Raw, they were losing. At one point, though, there was dissension between the two, but they managed to resolve their issues. The duo scored an upset victory of the Tag Team Champions, and they won more matches than previously. Their final match as a team came on the May 26, 2008 episode of Raw, when they lost a Tag Team title match. And that's it for Lundry. Paul London stayed on Raw and he made a few appearances before getting released in October of 2008. As for Brian Kendrick, he was directed to SmackDown and he was paired with Ezekiel Jackson. He was a heel at this point and in his time on SmackDown, Kendrick was treated like a bigger deal than he previously was. I will make a standalone video on him soon so expect THE Brian Kendrick. I mean, why wouldn't I make a video on him? He was interim WWE Champion for God's sakes and in my book that meant he's a former champ. <laughs> And yeah, that's Paul Lennon and Brian Kendrick. I always felt like these two should have had a more memorable run. Nonetheless, they had a lot of entertaining matches, but you gotta wonder, what if London didn't smile during that segment? Who knows what would have happened? Maybe they would have won three more tag team titles on Raw. All I know is that these guys are probably the most underrated tag team in WWE history. It's unfortunate that they didn't have a much more memorable run, but hey, doesn't matter. They were champs for nearly a year. And that's it for this video. Make sure you hit a slice bread on the like button and perhaps a 450 splash on the subscribe button. Peace. I'm out.